Welcome to Cadillac Unscripted. This is 107.9 CDY. It is Saturday morning, and uh, this is show number seven, and it is sponsored by Independent Bank as well as Remax Central Marianne Quist. And we have a special show this morning about a special show. Katie Huckle, take it away. Oh, my goodness, Rich. This is going to be special for our listeners today. Um, in this studio, we have two of the cast members for our upcoming murder mystery called Tears of a Crown. We also have with us Pat Goggin, who is the United Way Director of Wexford, Masaki County, and our esteemed writer of the show, Amy Peltier. So, yes, it's a privilege to have everybody with us today. And we're going to kick off with Pat, who's going to give us just some details about the show and tell our sure. listeners where they need to be. Thank Thank you. Well, Tears of a Crown is, is a very exciting show. In fact, the cast keeps saying that this is the best one ever, and Amy can react to that a little later. But this is a show about the pageant to beat all pageants. This is uh, Mr. Covington's, it's his money grab, if you will. It's his, he's old, and so it's his last one, and many of the pageant winners from the past have returned to claim the ultimate crown. I see. Okay. okay. And when and where? Well, the event takes place at the Fox Motors pre-owned showroom or used car showroom and that's right between the Ford dealership and the Toyota dealership and it's uh, our leap day it's it's uh, February 29th which is a Saturday at 6 p.m. okay and it's dinner and cocktails. dinner Herman is doing the dinner so we know that's going to be just delicious and he's also doing the bar so we know that the drinks will be stiff <laughs> <laughs> okay what about the cast Katie, it's really an exciting cast. Uh, back again is Katie Huckle. Oh. We are so pleased. Katie's been in every one of these murder mysteries, all 11 of them. So we're real pleased with that. Uh, Jason Elmore is back. He's been in the, the second most leading man, if you will. Uh, Brandon Peltier is in it. I think Amy had something to do with that. Uh, his character development is really targeted to, to Brandon. Uh, Caitlin Curtis, this is her, I believe, first time. Uh, Joe Bauman has been in it a couple times. Megan Vaselli is in the show. She's from 9 and 10 News. Kelly Simons is back with us. Jay Simons back with us again. You've been in this before, haven't you? You certainly have. And then Dan Alto, who is our, our Columbo from the old TV days. Absolutely, there he is. So this was written by you, by Amy, this part, but this is one of my favorite promos to kind of tee up for our audience what the show's all about. It's, it's time to send in the crowns. You are cordially invited to join us at this year's Covington pageant as the winners compete to win the ultimate title of King or Queen Covington. Covington pageants, where the competition is cutthroat, the answer to the interview question is never world peace, and the talent just might be murder. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> next we go to our writer, Amy Peltier. And Folks that come in from out of town just cannot believe that we've got a local writer of this caliber. And so can you tell us where these ideas come from? And then secondly, when you're a busy mother and a medical writer, when do you have time to do this? Uh, well, my ideas usually come from the theme. I try to come up with an idea for just a really fun party. I like getting people together to have fun, and I try to come up with an idea that people will get excited to dress up for, uh, whether it's a decade or, you know, this one will be, you can dress really however you want. You can dress like you're entering a pageant, or you could go for a humorous outfit, maybe. <laughs> uh, we had some friends coming, and he was a little worried about having to dress up. Uh, he, he's kind of a hunting kind of guy from Wisconsin, and we said... Throw on a flannel shirt and be Mr. Wisconsin. You know, you don't, you don't <laughs> have to wear a tuxedo. I you love You can it. come however you're comfortable. And if you feel like dressing up, then that's great. So, uh, but that's usually where the idea springs from okay. is, is the theme. And, you know, I, our resale shops love you because they get very busy around this time <laughs> yeah. of year with, you know, you're telling me that people could come in pageant gowns if mm -hmm. that's what they wanted to do and sure. cheers and all this kind of thing. Absolutely. And who doesn't want to be a pageant girl once right. in their life, you know? So <laughs> what about, you know, Danielle Steele wrote In the Middle of the Night. Mm -hmm. When does Amy write? Uh, I write about two weeks after the play is due. And <laughs> And, uh, Amen to that. And, that. and I drive poor, poor Pat and Sally a little crazy, uh, Sally Goggin. And um, this year, though, we have Shana Biller as our director. But uh, unfortunately, I do really have to be under the gun to have the words start to flow. But 
uh, once they do, like this year, I actually happened to write a lot on a plane because I was taking a trip out to Vegas, and that's how I finished it. Is that it was, right? You know, I was about to get to Vegas, so it had to be done. Because <laughs> <laughs> the fun needed to get done. Wow. Exactly. The work hey, needed to get done. Hey, Amy, let me give you a heads up. The next show is going to be in July of this summer. <laughs> yes. Okay? <laughs> I love That's it. That's not the worst idea is to give me a July, <laughs> July deadline might not be a bad idea. So I, when I'm with you socially, it's a little bit like having um, dinner with a psychologist, meaning they're <laughs> watching. Do you feel that you are that way when you're with other people that you're observing their behaviors and that that's fodder for your place? Uh, I definitely do that. Uh, I'm always kind of, I am an observer, I think, of human nature, and I try to keep my ears open for little snippets of dialogue that might inspire something. I read a lot of news, um, which is where I usually come up with the murder weapon. Oh, is that right? Yeah, so I and so through the whole year, I will just keep my eyes open for a good weapon, and that can sometimes inspire the idea behind the play, too. Just depends. Oh, wow. So, so. this is a little known fact. Amy has a twin. A I do. A twin. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Does she get to know what's going on? Do you run things by her? I do. She's actually my uh, my reader. Like, okay. as soon as it's done, I send it to her, and, uh, you know, she lets me know what works and what doesn't work. And so it is very handy to have a, t- <laughs> to have a twin to tell you uh, – you know, oh, no, this is not working, or, yeah, go back. That's a horrible idea. And so she's very handy, I have to say. I highly recommend, if you're going to write one of these, to have a twin. (laughs) Where do you get those? (laughs) So um, your household, the kids Mm -hmm. and and Brandon, do they get to know who the murderer is? Do they get – I mean, I'm sure they're curious. Uh, The kids have a complete disinterest in the whole process, (laughs) I have to say. They've – They've never asked to go to it. They've never asked to, uh, you know, how's the writing going? They they really don't uh, ask too much about it. And uh, Brandon does because he gets stressed out the further I get past my deadline. <laughs> so, you know, what can I do? How can I give you more writing time? So Okay. His character this year is particularly outrageous, yes. I would say. <laughs> um, and, it, I mean, is any of that organic? Or is it what you know he can do? You know, his character was actually a little bit flat, and it changed about two hours before I turned it in. I see. The entire character changed. Is that um, right? Okay. I don't really know why it did. I just had a little inspiration, and I went through the entire thing, and I changed him completely two hours before I turned the play in. Oh, my goodness so, sakes. Wow. Um, so sometimes I'm surprised by what joke gets the biggest laugh. Mm-hmm. Me too. You are too. Okay. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I, um, and so I can't remember if it was last year or the year before, but the crowd went wild with your joke to um, the Michigan turnabouts or roundabouts. Oh, the, yes. The roundabouts. Yes, who knew people really cared about those roundabouts? But I always try to think to myself, well, if it makes me laugh or it's something that I think about as I'm going you know, through my day, then a lot of people seem to relate to it. So... But yeah, the, that roundabout, you know. In the, I think the context of it was, you know, the world has gone crazy and yes. it's mayhem and chaos like what happened with Michigan with roundabouts. Right. And I think it's everyone being unfamiliar with how that worked when it first came out mm-hmm. and that kind of thing. So yes. um, is this something, is there is there a timeline for you? Is there a, I am only going to do this for so many years or this is a lot for me or is it just, I'm going to keep doing it while it's still fun? I think, yeah, just keep doing it while it's still fun. It's always uh, it's always a huge relief to get it done, as any writer will tell you. It's always just a relief to have it behind you, and it feels so great to have that accomplishment, to have it checked off. And uh, But then you also immediately start thinking about other ideas. So, sure. so yeah, I can definitely see doing um, more. Your collaboration with Sally Goggin, mm-hmm. you know, I've seen you huddled up in a restaurant, the two of you before. <laughs> you almost have like a force field around you. Stay out for now. What do those conversations sound like if we were a little mouse in the corner? Uh, I just think Sally's a genius. You know, she has so much experience and she's, you know, she married Pat. So, you know, uh-huh. <laughs> awesome. but, you know, she just really knows how to pull uh what I'm trying to say out of out of the play and to get it, you know, visually, I, I don't know. I, I have no idea how she does what she does, to be honest with you. It's uh, sometimes I'm just sitting there and to watch it all come to life 
it's just surprising and wonderful every time. Mm-hmm. You're a powerful She's- team, I think, is, is what we could say. The night of the event, we're, we always try to make sure, Pat does, that you're front and center so that you can see your characters mm-hmm. and you can see your work play out. How are you? Fe- I know your twins always here, which is exciting. Yes. Um, how do you feel the night of the event? Are there, are there nerves? Oh, what? there's definitely nerves. It's uh, uh, I'm very nervous, but uh, you know, once I made it past the first one and it didn't kill me, I thought, <laughs> 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 I, thought I can do this again, and uh, it just it feels so surreal to see people speak the things that you wrote a couple of of. Uh, Months ago, and we have some good ad libs too. Uh, Phil Standish is particularly good at ad libbing, and once in a while, I'll go, "That was funny." I don't know if I wrote that. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll go Love check it. it. Oh, that's fun. So, so yeah, it's fun. The night of the event is a good time for you. Oh, it is. Okay, absolutely. And we we drag her on stage, don't we, Pat? Yes, you do. Yes. Which it, does not come naturally to me. I don't really enjoy that. Okay. But <laughs> I mean, part of me, of course loves it because it it's just a really fun night and to see it all come together and I just love all of you so much and Aww. it's just a great night. Awesome. Um, many of us have asked you about um, Amy being a commercial writer and Amy selling your shows and syndicating <laughs> this. Has, yes. Is that still on the radar? Uh, I would love to do it someday. I just, I have four kids so I'm very busy. I work, I'm a freelance writer and editor so I work many hours as well doing that and that just seems to keep increasing the hours too um but it's definitely something i would like to do someday right and this these are not your only shows that you've written you've got other work out there correct uh i wrote one for the footlighters it was a shorter piece and it wasn't a murder mystery i Uh, want to say five years ago okay so i would like to write a high school play one of these days too Oh my goodness! You're fun. making Pat nervous. You're like, no, yeah. stay, yeah, stay away. in your lane. Stay out. That's right. That's exactly right. Stay in your lane. Uh, well, thank you so much, Amy. Thank you. We are going to segue um, to two of our characters in the in the show. Rich, we've got um, Oliver Martin, and he serves as sort of the everything. He's keeping the cast on course, the pageant on course, um, and I'll let him share a little bit about his job description, and then. Also um, in the studio with us is Detective Phil Standish, which is, of course, Dan Elto. So um, I'm going to let these guys talk a little bit to the group. I was wondering if they were going to talk to us, but, you know, (laughs) it's radio. We can't just be the pretty faces. (laughs) (laughs) Certainly not you, that's for sure. (laughs) Oh, dear. So these two, I'm going to quick give an overview. Um, Oliver Martin is an Englishman, as it seems. So we've got this fabulous accent, don't we, Oliver? (laughs) I like to think it's pretty fabulous, sure. <laughs> Can't understand you. <laughs> so can you tell, I mean, really give a job description of your role in, in the Covington pageant? Oh, absolutely. Oh, I love working for Mr. Covington. He's just an absolute wonderful man. Uh, I actually kind of do a little bit of everything for uh, Mr. Covington. Uh, I take care of him uh, to an extent personally. I make sure he's got everything he needs for these shows. I I make sure that everything's working real well. Uh, Things have been a little bit of a downturn for Mr. Covington, and so I've had to pick up a few extra jobs here and there, to be honest with you. But uh, I love doing it, and it's great work. Just a just a great man, Mr. Covington is. So when you say um, you had to pick up a couple of other little jobs, what could you be specific about what those are? Well, I mean, at this point now, I'm kind of like the stage manager, the announcer. Uh, I do the cooking. Uh, I do makeup. Uh, I worry about costumes. <laughs> What Pretty about, much everything that has to happen with the show, yes. What about true. lighting, Oliver, and what about that type of stuff? Oh, yes, absolutely. Miss Ferguson is very big on her spotlight, so I have to make sure that's in place as oh, well, I yes. See. yes. She's a bit of a diva, but don't tell her I said that. Oh, gosh, that is good to know about Pepper Ferguson. <laughs> very good to know. Detective, you, you know, you try to have a night out, and then some of these things happen. Can you tell the group about... Well, I'm actually... Coming to this event uh, in protest, I've been trying to contact Oliver here and Mr. Covington. I actually won a contest in 1975. I was a little chubby baby on the Charmin commercials, and <laughs> I thought for sure that would get me into this pageant of pageants, but they're not returning my call. So I'm hoping to get there, and maybe I can see this Mr. Covington and have a word with them and 
maybe get myself into this pageant. Just throw your hat in the ring, detective. Yeah, I'd probably shoe in to win, I would assume. Oh, absolutely. Um, back to Oliver, can you tell us a little bit about the contestants this year? Oh, absolutely. We've got just a great slate of contestants who have won a variety of other Covington pageants oh. in the past or are current title holders. I, I'm hesitant to tell you who's going to show up. I feel like that kind of information should be held for the show. I you see. should probably get hold of this gentleman here, Mr. Goggin, get I yourself a ticket and make sure that you attend so yes. that you can see who these folks are. But I can tell you right now, it is a wide variety of winners. And I can tell you also that Detective Standish is completely wrong. There is no way he would have won had he been able to enter with that title. 1975, <laughs> fat baby, whatever. <laughs> okay. Well, answer me this. Have any of these people done commercials in diapers? I was doing commercials while I was in diapers. <laughs> While that's a fair point, it's also making me eyes burn right now just thinking about it. <laughs> Your eyes are going to burn, all right. I carry pepper spray. <laughs> so, um, can you, I know you're, I'm, thank you. I mean, I, I understand that we all need to be at the show, but can you tell us what some of the talents might be, one or two? Mm, well, I might be able to share a little bit of that. Uh, okay. Certainly one of our title holders is known for his comedy routines. Oh, He's right. also a bit of a baton twirler, if I'm not mistaken. Not oh. sure if he's going to be doing that in particular or not. Okay. Uh, another one of our winners is quite good at uh, dramatic reading. Oh. It's one of his talents as well. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have a former bikini model winner. Uh, That's I don't want to give too much detail about that okay. one. But, uh, you know, if that be your bag, you might want to show up and see that one as well. But... Um, and then uh, we have someone else who's not actually entering the contest, but uh, is somebody from uh, Miss Ferguson's past that's, that's quite interesting as well. Uh, and then we have uh, a newcomer who has held the same title for quite a while. But again, I, I don't want to give away too much I of see. that. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that one's going to be very interesting as well as I, as I sit here. I don't, again, you need to come see the show. Hundred percent, going to hundred percent. So, Oliver, if you were, let's say, you weren't running everything, mm. and you were going to be a guest, mm. and you were going to attend, and you were a female, what would you wear? You know, we talked about Mr. Wisconsin. You know how funny that was. But oh, right. our listeners do want to know what what attire should look like. What would you suggest? I think that the suggestion I heard earlier about just kind of picking a title, right, and dressing appropriately for that, maybe even creating your own sash, right? So many pageants out there. They've got topics, just mm -hmm. a, a slew of them. Pick something and come that way. I, I, I'm thinking, uh, for example, you could come dressed in pajamas and be, you know, Miss I don't want to get up out of bed 2020 or something along those lines, right? You can create anything and come that way. You don't have to come and address. Now, I do encourage folks to stop by some of these local resale shops here in Cadillac and pick up some of these dresses. They've got some spectacular stuff. I have seen some of these things. And maybe some Aquanet and really get that hair going oh. for certain looks, I think would be 100%. would be very nice as well. But uh, don't let that hold you back. If you want to come see this show, don't worry about dressing up necessarily. If you don't, it's not your bag, it's okay. Just come to the show. Oh. Do I get the feeling you've got some of those dresses in your closet. <laughs> That's between me and my hairdresser. <laughs> so, detective. <laughs> yes. I mean, every year you walk in and you you kind of feel like the group isn't maybe as smart as they should be, or maybe not as sharp. And sometimes you maybe would say something rude or condescending or patronizing to the folks. Well, in my line of work, I'd basically deal with morons oh, day in and day out, I twenty-four see. hours a day. I'm so sorry. You know, let's just face it. Okay. Criminals they don't tend to be real smart. Okay. So. Right. And everybody's I, saying it wasn't them every single time. Well, yeah, nobody wants to admit to it. The jail's full of people that didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I assume I'm finally going to get myself a night out on the town where I can relax, right. maybe have a few cold ones. Yes. Uh, I'm sure nothing's going to happen. But even if nothing happens, We're I'm assuming most of these people in this pageant, they're probably not real smart either. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. Have you seen beauty pageants? I I, I have. Yeah. yeah. 
So, and you were talking about their talents. Do any of these people have like talents to shoot a, I don't know, a 38 caliber police revolver and score like one out of a 10 out of a police range? Because that's what I do. Oh, wow. No, but in fairness, I don't think any of them can toddle around in diapers anymore either. So, <laughs> uh oh. I stopped wearing diapers long ago. I see. Like three years. So has it ever, I mean, do you, do you think Chef Herman's there every year? I mean, is he ever a suspect? Uh, <laughs> he's always a little suspect. <laughs> but no, so far he's always been just somebody in attendance providing us a great meal. God, I do like to eat. So <laughs> I see. That's really why I'm coming. <laughs> I don't think Mr. Covington will talk to me, but there is going to be a buffet. Yeah, oh, <laughs> I see. So what what what's the feedback on the food every year? I mean, Phil, you could talk to us about that, or Pat could talk to us about that. Or? Well, I think the food the feedback has been tremendous. Uh, in fact, back again this year will be the uh, the salmon with the dill sauce. That's always a favorite. It I have multiple people comment on that every year, so uh-huh. they'll certainly be coming back for that. All right, seafood. <laughs> Yeah. (laughs) We will have more with our cast and group associated with the United Way murder mystery coming up after this word from our sponsors. This is Cadillac Unscripted on 107.9 CDY. Buying a home is still the great American dream. And yes, it can be an intimidating process, but you can rest assured and have confidence when the professionals from Remax Central are in your corner to guide you through it. Mary Ann Quist of Remax Central has helped hundreds of home buyers in and around the Cadillac area navigate the process over the years, and she's ready to help you too. From start to finish, from finding a home to submitting an offer to understanding the purchase agreement to inspections, surveys, and appraisals to the time when you finally sit down and sign those closing documents, Mary Ann will be there. When you're ready to buy, talk to Mary Ann Quist at Remax Central. See her listings at teamquist.com. This is Cadillac Unscripted on 107.9 CDY, the second half of our conversation with members of the cast and others associated with the United Way murder mystery continues now on Cadillac Unscripted, 107.9 CDY. We'll go back to Pat. Um, You know, Sally's had so much going on um, with a major surgery. And so it was go-to time and it was showtime and you needed a director. How did you two segue to Shana Biller? Well, the truth of that matter is I happened to open the door to my office to go, you know, run down the hall, and Shana was walking by, quite literally. And I said, Shana, would you be willing to direct the murder mystery this year? And she goes, sure. Just like that. Just like that, I swear. Just like that. And it was almost like, okay, don't you want to ask a question about, like, you know, when is it or, you know, where's the script or anything like that? She didn't. She had no questions. She just said, sure, I'll do that. So had you run this by the bosses, Amy and Sally, prior to asking I don't her? think I talked to Amy. I don't think I talked to you about that, did I, Amy? Uh, I don't, I don't think, think so. so. But I did. Uh, Sally and I had a, a conversation about who could, who could, be, who could do this mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and do it well. And the, the defining characterization was that Pat and Sally both went to Alma College, and so did Shana. And oh, Sally a was a theater major, <laughs> and Shana has a degree in theater also from Alma College. So... I really don't think there was anybody else in town that could have done it. Certainly Joe Ballin couldn't and, and, and <laughs> other past that. directors. Right. It yeah. had to be her. It had to be Sally. Shana. Uh, Shana. Yeah, that one. That one. Yeah. <laughs> so, the brown hair. So question for Amy, Pat, and Sally every year when this is percolating and rehearsals and everything that goes behind it, the marketing behind it, are you guys all in constant communication? Is Sally running ideas by you of I think I might do this or go here? How does that work? Uh, she doesn't run a lot by me. Once in a while, if she thinks um, that a line isn't working, she might run it by me and say, do you mind if we change it to this or, or something like that? But for the most part, I hand it off and she just goes with it. Okay. that's yeah. you, you sort of have put in all of the heavy lifting and, and it's almost like a relay, isn't it? Where you're handing the baton. Well, you know, it really is unusual to have the, the author accessible to you. Mm-hmm. And I think we sort of tend to play on it like you do any other script right the author is not here i can't talk to them so Mm -hmm. you know we've all spent a long time doing shows being involved in theater where you don't have that opportunity so you just make that decision and go now i sent amy some copy this year Mm -hmm. on uh on on the program copy and she had some great comments on that and we incorporated those but yeah and it's almost uh when you bring it up like this it's it's a little bit of an embarrassment oh my goodness how come we haven't been calling on you, Amy. I, I apologize for that. <laughs> on behalf of Sally, who's not here to defend herself. 
Well, I have a story that this really did happen to us. You you called the cast together, and this was at your home. And this might have been year three of the show, so it was still new. And we sat down. We didn't have a lot of time. That's the other thing that we haven't mentioned is there's a very short window of rehearsals. And so everybody really behaves in a professional way. They, they know their lines when they're supposed to. They show up, this type of thing. And so um, we're sitting in the Goggins living room with our scripts. We open them up. Sally and Pat had not read all the way through the show. And as we got our characters and started reading through, Sally looked at all of us and said, I don't like it. And do you remember this, Pat? I do, I do. I don't like it. And we also, what do you mean you don't, you know, and the, and the script was from England. And so she had mm. bought it from a company where she couldn't read the whole thing through because they didn't want to share the concept. You had to buy it first mm. type thing. And so we had to start over. The whole show had to start over, and we were under the gun. Do you remember how stressful that was? That was very stressful. And we were able to find – this was before Amy came on the scene. And right. We, and and this was uh, – this would have been December. Now, knowing what we know now about Amy and how she performs under pressure, it, <laughs> awesome. it would not have been out of line to give her a ring, but we didn't. I see. Her name came up, but it was immediately dismissed. She can't – we can't ask someone to do this, right. to turn it around in weeks. Uh, so we went back to the well with the, uh, and this was a, a cottage industry, I believe, that in, in England where these people enjoy writing these murder mysteries and they bring them together under a common uh, writer, or not writer, but a, a theater house I to, see. to sell these, to make these available. So we went back to the well there and, and read some others and we were able to make a decision to get one to come through. But it was after that that we called on Amy, would, you know, how would you like to help us out on this? <laughs> And, and uh, I think that's worked out very well. Uh, Amy has a staple of, we decided, we talked today, we, seven times you've done this for yes. us. This is the seventh one. It's right. our 11th year mm-hmm. with the seventh script that Amy has oh, my, written for us. A lot of oh, material. Tremendous. <laughs> Absolutely. So well, What I a wanna, gift. What a gift. It, she's get insanely talented. Um, Dan, I want to go back to ad-libbing. We know with Sally as a director, Sally is not a big fan of ad-libbing. <laughs> but somehow... Phil Standish gets away with it. Where does, I mean, and it's hard when you're in character and, and Phil Standish is talking to you and, and throws something out that you weren't expecting type thing, especially when you're being interrogated, okay? Where does that material come from? It, do, do you have that cooked up before the show or is it just coming out? Uh, no, normally if I've cooked it up, you've heard it in a rehearsal. Okay. Sometimes it's just the night of. <laughs> <laughs> something comes about like like I noticed Oliver wasn't very surprised that something sucked from England. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. You're gonna take a shot. I got it. Right. I remember one year, um, you know, the cast, we all become very good friends, too. And that's such a gift. That's the unintended consequence of long rehearsals um, that are pretty intense. And um, as, as the storyline went, I was dead, 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 and I wasn't supposed to move. And we'd rented my costume from the Old Town Playhouse because, of course, they all know Sally up there, too. And it was a beautiful Shantung dress. And the fake blood didn't come in in time. So as I was stabbed, I was sprayed down with, like, a whole bottle of ketchup. Do you remember that? Yes, yes. Yes. And I'm weaving around tables and I lay on the floor dead. And to be dead for Sally means you don't blink and you don't breathe and you don't do any. You're going to lay there dead. And so I see all these people, you know, standing over me. And that year, Jason Elmer was the undertaker. And I believe Peterson's Heights Mahold Ship, somebody had, had brought in a hearse. And it was a real hearse. And I was going to be put in the hearse dead. And so Jason calls someone from the audience to help carry my dead body. And now my microphone's been turned off, right? But Jason's, of course, is still very live. And as he picks me up with this random stranger, he stops for this big pregnant pause, and he looks at the entire audience and says, she's a lot heavier than she looks, folks. (laughs) And as they put me into the hearse, which I'm not happy about because there's no doors in the back of a hearse because why would there be? See, so once you're in there and someone shuts the door, that's it. So they put me in the hearse, and I do this to him because now no one can see me. And I said, you're going to need a hearse. (laughs) (laughs) So that was funny. But anyway, we we do have these jokes between us. And I will say, every year I think Herman might jump in as a character. I mean, he comes back in. His food's up and back with us in the green room, you know, because we're we're at Fox Motors. And so there's salmon and buns and lollies back there and salads, and he's shouting, carrying on, and his arms and stuff. And, And pretty soon I think, He's in character. He's gotten even more Herman-esque as the night goes on. And pretty soon I think he's going to jump into the show. So I asked Sally one time, can we just can we just ad-lib him? Can we just give him a little bit part? And she said, I can't control Herman. No. 
<laughs> so that's one of my little jokes with him. But um, yeah, I just, what else do we need to tell everybody, Phil? Gosh, we haven't heard from Pepper Ferguson Covington Ferguson. Oh, it's Pepper. Yes, yes. So my, my character, yes. So she is um, Marcus's ex-wife, Pepper is. Uh-huh. And um, she's just a real lady, just a wonderful, wonderful hostess of the pageant. Classy broad. Mm-hmm. Oh, I see. Thank you, for, thank you for bringing that home for us, Dan. I appreciate it. <laughs> or Phil, pardon me. Phil you know, Sanders. you'll be shocked to find out Pepper's very competitive. Yes, yeah. I would be very surprised. She doesn't like to lose. No, no, no. no. Okay, okay. <laughs> So we've got some other accents in the show. And Amy, I where does this come? I want to know where the accents come from. I mean, we can't give too much away because one of them is really unsuspected. But do you, when Br- you gave Brandon his accent because he's really got it down and obviously Jay is a pro. But does he have to practice to get that good? Practice the accent? Yes. Um, no, he can pretty much, he has a stable of accents he can call upon, actually. <laughs> does he really? Yeah, he does. What and, are some of his others? We need. Uh, he does a very irritating Irish accent. <laughs> that He gets about three words out, and I say, no. That's <laughs> I see. And, uh, and actually, he, his accent is one of the things that changed in those last couple of hours. Okay. Um, so I had to go back through and, and change his nationality <laughs> the last few hours <laughs> of uh, writing the play. Uh, but he, I, I think most of the characters prefer to have an accent, they, or most of the actors. They just seem to get excited about getting accents. So I thought, well, this is a good opportunity to pass out quite a few of them because everybody's kind of coming from around the world from these different pageants. So it's, it seemed like a good opportunity to do that. And, and uh, so it's just fun. Yeah. I think more fun to play with an accent, maybe, I don't know, for some of them. <laughs> oh, I see. So, Pat, can you tell us who you think is the most outrageous this year? Uh, that would be Shana Biller, the director. Oh, she has to say <laughs> she that. Ha- oh, she's the most she, outrageous. She's the most outrageous, yes. yes. You know, it's funny because Sally always does our character for us, and then she's kind of better than we are anyway, so it takes us to the next level. But Shane has been doing that this year, have you noticed? And mm-hmm. she's gives us ideas, and then I've got to remember, sort of like Dan Smith, these people have theater degrees. So they can look into their toolbox and say, have you thought about doing it this and this and this? And we all say, okay. Mm-hmm. So um, Shana and Sally are both incredibly busy, so Sally has sat in now on a couple of rehearsals and given us tools and things that she thinks we should do. I would tell you, though, there is a secret that Sally wouldn't tell anybody. Oh, goody. Yes, this is the insight. Yeah, this yes. is the dirt. And that is that doing theater in the round is very difficult. And so if, if some, there's the first timer that's coming in, she doesn't tell them that this is just difficult. She just directs them as to what to do and, and be sure to keep in mind that the audience is all around you and to keep moving so you're not blocking the people that are behind you all the time. But that really is uh, a different venue, different event, uh, Dancing with the Y Stars. And we had a young lady who was a choreographer who was doing uh, she, she was ballet. She's oh, a ballerina. Sure. And we announced to the group that uh, this was going to be in the round. She ended up dropping out. She could not bring herself to think about other dimensions behind her and beside her. She could only focus on straightforward. I think that's quite a deal. And, and these people are doing it, and they don't even know that it's difficult anymore. Oh, right. It just yeah. becomes second nature. Yeah. It does. Yeah. I want to throw to Oliver about um, the – after after Act One, the cast goes out into the audience because the audience is trying to figure out who done it. What are the rules when the cast is is intermingling with the guests? What are the rules of our characters in terms of what we because they're going to ask us questions? What we can and cannot do? Can you share that with the audience? Well, first of all, you're not allowed to lie, right? I okay. mean, that should be pretty straightforward, you would think, because. We should all be raised that way, right, Detective Standish? That's <laughs> absolutely correct. Absolutely. So you can't lie. Uh, so you can't, you can't make stuff up or, or tell them things that would be purposefully misleading, right? But you can uh, draw upon your own personal experience. For example, I was born in Umbudfordshire, London, England. It's a small suburb. So I would tell somebody that if they asked where I was from, for example. Uh, but you uh, you have to kind of stick with what is real about you and make sure you're telling them 
the truth. So you want to make sure that you don't lie. Because these folks are there, they're trying to figure out a who done it. So you don't want to give them anything that's going to mislead them. Now, if you want to lie to the detective... <laughs> I wouldn't recommend that. You can do that all you want. Well, myself, I got nothing to hide. So, you know, I'll tell you whatever you want to hear. <laughs> do they lie to you, detective? Oh, I think they try to. But when you're as good at what, at, at what you do as I am... Right. I mean, I see right through it. <laughs> Except the ladies. The ladies, they sometimes throw me for a loop. <laughs> so do you have some favorite ladies this year? Cole does he? <laughs> <laughs> of course. Oh, I see. Yeah, so, well, I actually look forward to the ladies that come to the event uh, because, you know, whole Phil's on the prowl. <laughs> so <laughs> keep that in mind when you're getting ready, bachelor. ladies. <laughs> Oh, thank you so much for being with us. We've got our writer, some of our cast members, and the director of the United Way. Please join us at Tears of a Crown. Um, and it's on February 29th, Rich. And the thing we have left out is how do folks get tickets? Call Pat hey. Goggin. They, okay. can, they can call the United Way office, and the United Way is in the phone book, but it's 775-3753. Is it on the Google, too? Because not many people have phone books anymore. <laughs> You're right. It's on the Google. <laughs> And it's on the interweb also. Oh, you, I love it. It's out on the interwebs and on the Google. It's on the interweb. If you Googled United Way Cadillac, it would come up. Okay. One more time, I want to say thank you so much to our United Way director, Pat Goggin, for being with us. Our talented author, Amy Peltier, for joining us in the studio. Oliver Martin, one of our cast members. And, of course, Detective Phil Standish. Thank you, folks. Thank, thank you. you. Well, pleasure. Thank you, Katie. Cadillac Unscripted is sponsored by Independent Bank, as well as Remax Central, Mary Anquist. Join us next week, uh, Saturday morning at 8.30, for more Cadillac Unscripted on 107.9 CDY.